chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. I'm reading from the New King James Version translation of the Bible. It simply says, when the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Thus is the reading of the word of our God, the grass withered, the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I just want to talk today for a few moments about the benefits of the blood. I want to talk about the benefits of the blood. Seeing as how I only have 18 more minutes, permit me to give you in advance the four points of my message. The four points of my message. Point number one is that the blood indicated a new intimacy. The blood indicated a new intimacy. My second point is that the blood instituted a better covenant. The blood instituted a better covenant. Thirdly, the blood inaugurated another church ordinance. The, ch the blood inaugurated another church ordinance. And then my fourth and final point is the blood satisfied God. The blood satisfied God. Let's go to work. Jesus in the setting of this text is engaged, involved, and present with his disciples at what is designated the Last Supper. Jesus no doubt had had innumerable meals with his disciples, particularly after a three-year ministry I'm a certain of the fact that he ate with them innumerable times. But this meal would be a different meal. This meal in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, is designated as being the Last Supper. Some theologians suggest that the writings of this event by the Apostle John are distinctly different. But in reality, there is a precise correlation between the synoptics and the writings of John. My beloved Jesus tells the disciples, look, 
It is time for the feast of unleavened bread. It is time for the meal that is called the Passover. Jesus tells them, go in into the city and, and when you get in to the city, you will discover a man that is carrying a pitcher of water. You'll follow him into the house and, and you will say unto him, the master, the teacher rather says to you, where is the guest chamber? Where is the guest room? Where the final meal is to take place? This meal, my beloved, was a meal that was draped in significance. How do we know that? Well, our first point indicates that because it, it signifies the fact that Jesus was entering into a new level of intimacy with his disciples. Most notably, when you read in the text, in verse number 14, it says, when the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. The Bible says the hour has come. My beloved, the hour has come. Uh, uh, up until this point, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, the disciples had only experienced one level of intimacy with Christ. First of all, they had experienced the level of being called followers. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19 designates that Jesus calls them his disciples. Up until this moment, they had only been followers of Christ. But as the result of this event in the upper room, they would transition from followers to friends. They, they, they would transition from followers to friends. How do we know it? Because in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 15, Jesus says to them in his what is called the upper room discourse, because John writes unlike Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they don't share what Jesus particularly said to an extreme while in the upper room, but John does. And in John chapter 15, verse 15, Jesus says, heretofore you've been called my disciples. You've been called my servants. He says, but servants don't know what their Lord does. Jesus said to them in this upper room experience, now I'm going to call you friends. It, it was in this setting, my beloved, that they are transcended from being followers to friends. But not only, get this, do they transcend in this setting from being followers to friends, but they jump all of the way from being followers to family. Because in the text, that is the symbolism of them taking the cup of blood and drinking it. The cup or the fruit of the vine and drinking it because understand something my beloved they became followers as a result of their faith but they become family as a result of their drinking from the cup I wish I had a witness here they 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 they, they, they are now family when they take this cup that is symbolic of the blood of Jesus Christ and drink it. Now they have consumed the DNA of God himself. 
They are no longer just followers. They are no longer even just friends, but they now become family. They, they, they become what First John chapter 3 verse 1 says. They now are called children of God. When we assemble at the Lord's table each first Sunday, you ought not just come as a follower. Yes, my beloved, you ought not just be a friend to Jesus, but you ought to be in the family. Wish I had a witness here. So, some are content merely being followers while others are content merely singing that song of the church, what a friend we have in Jesus. But can I tell you, it's better when God is your daddy and Jesus is your brother. You ought to have new intimacy with him. Yes, not only does it indicate a new intimacy, I wish I had time, but it also institutes a better covenant. Because understand something, the setting of, of the message is that they are getting ready to celebrate the Passover. I understand the Passover is indicative of Exodus chapter 12, verse number 13. You remember what God commanded Israel to do. It was during the 10th plague that God had placed upon Egypt. And God said unto them, listen, this is what you are to do. You, you, are, to take, you are to take a male lamb that is one year of age. You are to set it aside on the 10th day. And then on the 14th day of Nisan, that being the day of preparation, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to kill the lamb. You, you, you're supposed uh, to kill the lamb and take the blood of the lamb and place it on the transcom and the doorpost of your house. Then you're supposed to take the meat of the lamb and roast it. And then you're supposed to eat all of the lamb. That includes the head, that includes the feet, and the entrail or the backside of the lamb. And anything that is not eaten by the end of the Passover, you are to burn it up with fire. Listen, my beloved, Jesus is, has said to them, this is the feast of unleavened bread because when they ate the lamb, they were to eat it with unleavened bread and wild lettuce. Jesus says unto them, listen, on the day, the 14th day of Nisan, which is the day of preparation preceding the Passover, you're supposed to put all of the unleavened bread out of your house. Any, anything that has leaven in it, you got to get it out of the house. He, he says, and, and get this, and get this, the object of it was as Jesus sits down with them for this last supper. Jesus is saying unto them, that was what God wanted you to do under the old covenant. He says, but you're sitting down with me right now and we're making history up in here. Jesus is saying, after you eat of my body and drink of this cup, there's going to be a new covenant. I wish I had a witness here. He says, in other words, you've got to understand that in the matter of the time that you eat the bread and drink the cup, there will be a brand new dispensation in the spiritual realm. God says you don't have to kill a lamb no more. God says you don't have to worry about blood no more because you are seated at the table with the lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world, the Paschal Lamb. This meal instituted a new covenant. My beloved, we celebrate today as we gather around the Lord's table a new covenant. 
It's a better covenant. I wish I had a witness here. Aren't you glad today? Aren't you glad today? And I don't mean to bother anybody, but because of our laziness, there are some of us that wouldn't be willing to go out and chase down a lamb and kill it and do everything that was supposed to be done to a lamb. Some of us are so lazy, we don't even come to church and give reverence and honor to the lamb. God set up a better covenant. But then this text is indicative of the fact that God inaugurated another church ordinance. Because look, if you will, my beloved, with me at verse 19, the C clause. I've got to let y'all go. Verse 19, the C clause. Jesus says unto them, listen, he says, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20, there is a transitional word, which is the word likewise. He took also the cup, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. That likewise deals with the preceding three words or four words that are in the end of verse 19. Jesus is saying to them, in remembrance of me. Notice, my beloved, that Jesus had already in Matthew chapter number 20, he had said unto the sons of Zebedee, uh, unto their mother when they came asking to be seated one on the left and one on the right. Jesus said unto them, he said, now, can you drink of the cup that I'm about to drink of? And can you be baptized with the baptism that I have been baptized with? You remember that Jesus in Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, walked down to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. Jesus did that symbolic. He did not have a need to be baptized, but he did it for our sake. Why? Because Jesus was instituting, yes, the ordinance of baptism in the church. Baptism is the first ordinance in the church that was founded by Jesus Christ. You cannot, my beloved, take the Lord's Supper except or until you've been buried, yes, with Christ Jesus and have been resurrected up into life brand new. In other words, until you've been born again. But right here in the words of our text, Jesus is inaugurating a new covenant. He's saying not only do you need to be baptized, which is symbolic of the bearing of the old and the placing on of the new, but he says unto them, you also have to eat of my body and drink of my blood. In other words, he's saying unto them that the church has to do this. Can I tell you on today any church that does not administer baptism and uh, the Lord's Supper do not belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And every believer who is a part of the church ought to be present when there is baptism and the Lord's Supper. Why? Because Jesus, in the words of the text, says that when you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. In other words, Jesus is saying, you honor me and you bring honor upon what I did on your behalf. Notice, if you will, in the text, my beloved, that Jesus coordinated this last supper also, get this, with the setting of him being betrayed. Have I got a witness here? Notice what it says in verse 21 
while Jesus had divided among them the bread and the wine. In other words, get this, salvation and relationship with Jesus is individual. You can't get to heaven. You cannot have relationship based on the back of your mother or your daddy, your sister or your brother. You've got to know him for yourself. But while they're seated right there, I want y'all to get this. I got to let y'all go. While they're seated there, Judas is in the midst. In verse number 21, Jesus says that it's interesting. Uh, uh, it's verse number 20, yeah, 21. He said, but behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. Now, this is significant in the text because Jesus is instituting a new ordinance in the church. It is the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. And I heard Deacon Vereen this morning read from 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. And Paul reiterates the setting of this text. Because while Judas is mentioned in the text, it's because Jesus uh, had shared his body with Judas. But Judas uh, had bad, mo bad motives in receiving it. That's why Paul wrote unto the Corinthian church. Uh, he said, don't you dare see it. Uh, and eat of the Lord's body, nor drink of the Lord's blood, and you know that you intend to betray him. He says, don't eat of the Lord's supper if you know that your relationship with him is not right. Because if you eat of the supper and drink of the cup, then ye eat and drink damnation uh, unto your own soul. Uh, that's why we cannot play uh, with the Lord's table. Uh, it is not merely a piece of bread uh, and a thimble of juice, uh, but it is symbolic uh, of the body of Jesus. Uh, it is symbolic of the blood of Jesus. And if you know that you're not right with the Lord, you ought not play with the Lord. If you know you're not right with the Lord, you ought not play with the body of the Lord. Because can I tell you, God don't play when it comes to his son Jesus. Have I got a witness here? But the text says that Jesus says unto them, take and eat of my body and then take the cup. And he said unto them, drink the cup because in the cup is the DNA of divine and everlasting life. Now the wonderful thing, and I really wish I had time, is that this cup, my beloved, was the result of the cup that Jesus drank in the Garden of Gethsemane. In other words, Jesus exchanged cups with you and me. At the Last Supper, we drank of his DNA, but in the Garden of Gethsemane, he drank of our cup. When he said, Father, if it be possible, let this bitter cup pass me by. In the cup he drank, was our sins and iniquities. In the cup he drunk was our shortcomings and hang-ups. But I'm so glad 
that he drunk from the cup in order that we might drink from his cup. Have I got a witness here? And so I hear him say, take this cup and drink this cup, for it is symbolic of my blood. Can I close when I tell you that God is always, yes, honored blood. It goes all of the way back to the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter number four, when God said unto Cain, where is your brother Abel? And Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? And God said, the blood of your brother crieth out to me from the ground. The blood has always been dear unto God. Have I got a witness here? That's why God told Israel, you've got to kill lambs. You've got to kill rams. You've got to kill pigeon doves because the only thing that will atone for your sin is blood. But I am so glad. I say I'm so glad that in that upper room, yeah, my Lord, that the blood of Jesus, I say the blood of Jesus, I say the blood of Jesus satisfied the Father as he hung out on Calvary. Somebody said they pissed him in the side and the blood and water came running out. They put a crown of thorns upon his head and the blood came running down. I am so glad that he shed his blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. One day when I was lost, he died. He died. He died upon the cross. I know it was the blood. Is there anybody here who knows it was the blood? Is there anybody here who thanks God for the blood? Yeah! 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 Look at your neighbor, tell him, neighbor, I thank God for the blood. His blood cleaned me up. His blood atoned for my sin. His blood made a dead and no good somebody clean again. I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it was the blood, yay! Do me a favor, some of y'all ain't said a word. Look at your neighbor. And tell him, neighbor, you ought to thank him for his blood. Tell him, say, his blood covers you all night long. His blood covers you as you're driving up and down the street. His blood covers you. When you're at your doctor's appointment, uh, his blood uh, 
cover your children while they're at school. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Right where you are. Right where you are. I want to extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. Somebody here right now needs to know that there is still a fountain. Feel with blood draw from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood and lose all their guilt and stain. Do me a favor, those of you who saved and know you're saved, there's no doubt in your mind you saved today. I need you to bow your heads. I need you to bow your heads, close your eyes, and I need you to whisper a prayer that God would move throughout the sanctuary. Right now, somebody possibly walked in this place that needs a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here, sir, if you're here, ma'am, if you're here, son, if you're here, daughter, and you're unsaved, You've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You've never taken advantage of the blood of Jesus that was shed for the remission, the remission of your sin. Wherever you are right now, the saints of God in this house are praying for you that the Spirit of God would draw you even right now. So wherever you are in this place, if you're unsaved, if you're unsaved, I need you to make your way to the nearest aisle. Come on right now. Come on right now. If you're if you're unsaved, make your way to the nearest aisle. Those standing around you, they'll let you by. Come on right now. Come on and give your life to the Lord Jesus. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. Come on right now. You might be in this place and you say, Pastor, I'm saved. I've given my life to the Lord Jesus, but I'm without a church home. My beloved, if being in the church is right, being out of the church is wrong, God wants you to have relationship with this church. So if, if you're here and you're unsaved or you're unchurched, maybe you're new in the Orlando area, we'd be delighted to be your church home. I'd be delighted to be your church family. I'd be delighted to be your pastor rather and we'd be delighted to be your church family. I need you to step out in the nearest aisle and come on right now. If you're unsaved, if you're unsaved or if you're unchurched, come on right now, come on right now that makes the difference at Calvary. If you're here, if you're here, if you're here, and I thank God, I thank God for, for the blood that came streaming down for me. It was the blood. Yes, it was that made the difference at Calvary. Come on, choir. Come on, choir. And I thank God Yes, they came streaming down for me. It was the blood. Do me a favor, reach over, take your neighbors by their hands. Take your neighbors by their hands. I just want to say a prayer. 
There may be those of you going through things in this house, but you need to know that God still responds to and answers prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us. Help us, oh God, to understand the severity and the seriousness of what Jesus did and went through for our behalf. Father, we thank you for life and we thank you for salvation. We thank you that the penalty for sin has been paid. A debt we owed we could not pay, but oh God, we thank you he paid a debt that he did not owe for us and we bless your name right now. Father, we recognize that we've sinned, we've come short of your glory, so please, sir, forgive us and we plead that blood. Cover us now. Make us to appear white as snow. Father, we pray for those issues and problems and challenges and burdens that are in the house right now. Father, intervene, intercede. As a matter of fact, take control, take charge. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Father, for those that are sick, touch right now. For those that are burdened and trouble in body and in spirit and in mind, touch right now. Father, bless Mount Pleasant. Bless us right now. Father, we want to sense your presence in our lives on a continual basis. Have your way. Have your way. Sweep through this house right now. Heal, deliver, and set free as only you can. In the name of Jesus, have your way. Destroy yokes right now. In the name of Jesus, thank you for his blood. Touch, Lord, every person under the sound of my feeble voice. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, amen. Turn to somebody and hug them. And if you can tell them with boldness that you're covered by the blood, tell them I'm covered by the blood. Came streaming down from me. It was the blood that made the difference. One more time, and I thank God. Come on, Ursus. <laughs> I thank God for the, the blood that came streaming down for me. It was the blood that made the difference.